Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. In today's installment of our Advanced Organic Chemistry course, we're joined by Rhea Halder. Rhea earned her bachelor's with honors in chemistry at Hindu College, University of Delhi. She subsequently completed her master's at the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, where she worked under the supervision of Dr. Nidhi Jain. Currently, she's pursuing her PhD at the Max Planck Institute in the group of Professor Tobias Ritter. Today, Rhea will give us a lecture on protecting groups which we'll see have been a cornerstone in allowing chemoselective operations to be carried out in organic synthesis. And from there, I'll let you get started, Ria. Thank you very much for joining us as a guest speaker today. Thank you, Matt, for the kind introduction and for inviting me to this platform. So the topic that I'll be talking about in today's Advanced Organic Chemistry episode is Protecting Groups. Selective functionalization of polyfunctional molecules is an important and desirable attribute in multi-step organic synthesis. In the planning and execution of such multi-step synthesis, an important consideration is the compatibility of the functional groups that are already present with the reaction conditions required for subsequent steps. It is frequently necessary to modify a functional group in order to prevent interference with some reaction in the synthetic sequence. A protecting group is a molecular framework that is introduced onto a specific functional group in a polyfunctional molecule to block its reactivity under reaction conditions needed to make modifications elsewhere in the molecule. Three basic questions to address when choosing a protective group are Can I put it on where and only where I want? Will it survive all future reaction conditions and will it affect the reactivity of the substrate? And can I take it off and only it off when needed? It is also a fact that each protecting group incorporated in a multi-step synthesis increases the number of steps to the synthesis and reduces the overall yield and efficiency. Fortunately, the methods of protective group installation and removal have been highly developed and the yields are usually excellent. This episode presents information on the synthetically useful protective groups for four major functional groups that is the hydroxy group, the amine group, carbonyl group that is aldehydes and ketones and the carboxylic acid groups. Ethers are one of the most important protecting groups for alcohols. All ethers are stable to basic reaction conditions and can tolerate organometallics. They tolerate the nucleophilic reducing agents like lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride and even oxidizing agents such as pyridinium chlorochromate and manganese dioxide. Also, they are stable to very strong bases such as LDA. The simple alkyl groups like methyl ethers, which are readily accessible via the Williamson ether synthesis, are generally not very useful for protection of alcohols because they require very harsh electrophilic conditions for deprotection. The third butyl group is an exception and has found some use as a hydroxy protecting group. Owing to its stability of the third butyl cation, Turbutyl ethers can be cleaved under moderately acidic conditions and trifluoroacetic acid is frequently used for that purpose. The turbutyl group is normally introduced by reaction of the alcohol with isobutylene in the presence of an acid catalyst. The trital group is removed under even milder conditions and is an important hydroxy protecting group, especially in carbohydrate chemistry. This group is introduced by reaction of the alcohol with triphenylmethyl chloride via an SN1 substitution. Hot aqueous acetic acid suffices to remove the trital group. The ease of removal can be increased by addition of electron donating substituents. Trital groups can also be removed oxidatively using ceric ammonium nitrate. In case a molecule cannot tolerate the acidic conditions required for cleavage of an ether protecting group, the benzyl group can serve as a hydroxy protecting group as they are quite stable under both acidic and basic conditions and also toward a wide variety of oxidizing and reducing reagents. Benzyl groups are usually introduced by the Williamson reaction. 
Catalytic hydrogenolysis offers the mildest method for deprotecting benzyl ethers. Butyl lithium can be used to deprotonate a benzylic hydrogen. Therefore, the lithiated ether obtained by the treatment with S-butyl lithium forms alkyl boronate by reaction with trimethyl borate. And then finally, oxidation with hydrogen peroxide liberates the unmasked alcohol. Hydrogenolysis of secondary and tertiary benzyl ethers can be sluggish. Protection of alcohols using benzyloxy methyl chloride produces corresponding methoxybenzyl ethers which are cleaved more readily than the corresponding benzyl ethers. These groups can be removed oxidatively by using DDQ. The reaction proceeds through a benzylic cation and the methoxy substituent is necessary to facilitate the oxidation. The ease of removal can be increased by further addition of methoxy group as is summarized in the rate of cleavage table. These reaction conditions do not affect most of the other common hydroxy protecting groups and is therefore useful in synthetic sequences that require selective deprotection of different hydroxy groups. Silyl ethers are among the most frequently used protective groups for the alcohols. This is because their reactivity, that is both formation and cleavage, can be modulated by a suitable choice of substituents on the silicon atom. Both steric and electronic effects regulate the ease of cleavage in multiply functionalized substrates and hence should be considered in planning the selective deprotection. Alcohols can easily be converted to silyl ethers by reaction with trialkyl silyl chlorides in presence of an amine base. Also, they are easily cleaved by exposure to fluoride ion, which is attributed to the high affinity that fluoride ion has for silicon. The reported half-lives vary as a function of environment and acid or base concentration, but they serve to help define a relative stabilities of these silyl groups. One of the applications of silyl ethers is in the epoxidation of allylic alcohols that showed facial selectivity when using MCPBA oxidant in which hydrogen bonding played a key role. The hydroxy group can form hydrogen bond with the oxygen in the epoxide, stabilizing it and hence prefers to add the epoxide to the same phase as the hydroxy group. However, when the hydroxy group is masked using bulky TBS group, Steric effects direct peroxide addition to the opposite phase of the hydroxy group. Another novel application of silyl ethers is found in the development of the hayashi jogerson catalyst used for alpha functionalization of aldehydes. Proline, often referred as a universal catalyst, is certainly a part of this noble club because of its high utility in the enantial selective transformations of aldehydes. However, good hydrogen bonding properties of the electrophiles is required to achieve high asymmetric induction. In 2005, after carrying out a careful survey, Hayashi and Jogerson group independently came up with a set of pyrolidin derivatives that could potentially overcome the previous limitations. Structure B in the present slide was found to be a highly active catalyst for a variety of transformations, but very low enantioselectivity selectivity was obtained. On the other hand, structure C promoted reactions with a very good level of stereo control, but gave a low catalyst turnover, which was attributed to the formation of a relatively stable and unreactive hemiaminal species E. To prevent this, the hydroxyl group was protected with a TMS group, which could be repaired in a single step with a very high yield. This simple modification substantially increased the catalytic turnover in the alpha functionalization of aldehydes. We have seen that one of the requirements of good protecting group is that it should be readily and selectively introduced to the desired functional group in a polyfunctional molecule 
and also should be capable of being selectively removed under mild conditions when its protection is no longer required. Attempts were made to selectively silylate the primary hydroxyl group of the molecule A. A combination of TESCL and imidazole resulted in a mixture of base silylation of both the carboxyl and secondary hydroxy groups. Ultimately, a change in the base from imidazole to 2,6-lutidine led to an exclusive silylation of the desired primary hydroxyl group. The difference in the selectivity between the two bases is presumed to be a result of the formation of a more active silylating agent derived from the reaction of imidazole with the silyl chloride. Apparently, there is no reaction between the silyl chloride and 2,6-lutidine, which simply acts as a base. Also, we have learned that the steric factors play an important role in determining selectivity of deprotection of silyl ethers. As a result, the TES ether can be cleaved in the presence of a bulkier TBS ether using HF in a serotonitrile. In general, methods used to cleave the TBS ether are effective for cleavage of the TES ether. A less common method to prepare silyl ethers is via Brook rearrangement, which involves an intramolecular migration of a silyl group from carbon to oxygen in presence of a catalytic amount of a base. A cyclic pentavalent silicon species is formed after deprotonation. Subsequent ring opening and fast and irreversible protonation of the carbon ion leads to the corresponding silyl ether. The greater strength of a silicon oxygen bond as compared to the silicon carbon bond provides the driving force for the conversion. The ability to migrate from one hydroxyl to another is another property of silyl ethers that can be used to advantage. Migration usually occurs under basic conditions in protic solvents and proceeds intramolecularly through a pentacoordinated silicon. The concept was used advantageously in Overman's synthesis of alcyonine in which silyl migration facilitated the deprotection of a hindered TBS ether. Another class of protecting groups used for alcohols is acetals and ketals. These are also inert to basic and nucleophilic reagents and remains unchanged under hydride reduction and organometallic reactions. It also protects the hydroxy group against oxidation. The tetrahydropyronyl ether or the THP group is applicable when mildly acidic hydrolysis is appropriate for deprotection. It is introduced by an acid catalyzed addition of the alcohol to the vinyl ether moiety in dihydropyrin, generally using as the catalyst. A disadvantage of the THP group is that a new stereogenic center is produced and if the alcohol is chiral, the reaction gives a mixture of diastereomers, which may complicate purification and characterization. One way of avoiding this problem is to use 5,6-dihydrofomethoxypyrin, where no new chiral center is introduced. Alpha haloethers are also often used for the protection of alcohols. Their high reactivity in nucleophilic displacement reactions by alkoxides permits protection of alcohols under mild conditions. The MOM and MEM groups are normally introduced by reaction of an alkali metal salt of the alcohol with methoxymethyl chloride or methoxyethoxymethyl chloride. The MOM and MEM groups can be cleaved by pyridinium tosylate. The MEM group can easily be removed under non-aqueous conditions and reagents such as zinc bromide, magnesium bromide, titanium tetrachloride or trimethyl silyl iodide permits its removal. The MEM group is more stable to acidic aqueous hydrolysis than the THP or the MOM group. This relative reactivity relationships allow the THP and MEM groups to be used in a complementary fashion when two hydroxy groups must be deprotected at different points in a synthetic sequence. 
Please note that the use of mom chloride to protect alcohols is associated with a big safety concern as the reagent is highly carcinogenic to humans and the byproduct formed during its preparation is even more toxic. Special precautions must be taken when using such chemistry, especially during a large-scale synthesis. Acetylization of 1,2 and 1,3 diols plays an important role in manipulating the reactivity of cyclic and acyclic polyhydroxy compounds. Acetyls of 1,2 and 1,3 diols are readily accessible from their reactions with aldehydes in presence of an acid catalyst. Once formed, these acetals are very stable to basic conditions but are labile towards acids. In preparing acetonides of triols, the 1,2 derivative is generally favored over the 1,3 derivative, which in turn is favored over the 1,4 derivative. In cases where two 1,2 acetonides are possible, the thermodynamically more favored one prevails and the secondary alcohols have a greater tendency to form cyclic acetals than do the primary alcohols. Protection of an alcohol functional group by esterification sometimes offers advantages over use of acetal or ether groups because generally esters are stable under acidic conditions and are especially useful in protection during oxidations. Third butanoyl esters, also known as the pivolate esters, can easily be prepared from alcohols by reaction with pivoloyl chloride in presence of a base and DMAP as catalyst to increase the reaction rate. The steric bulk of the third butyl group makes these esters resistant to nucleophilic attack, including hydrolysis under mild basic conditions. Paratoluene sulfonate esters are often used for the regioselective protection of hydroxy groups in carbohydrates and nucleic acids. Methods for the selective deep protection of tosyl groups include reductive cleavage with sodium mercury amalgam and methanol solution. Also, with tosyl protecting group, some interesting selectivity has been obtained. The different regioselectivity observed for the sulfonylation of triol A in the presence of pyridine and triethylamine is due to the difference in their basicity. Triethylamine being a stronger base can deprotonate one of the axial hydroxy groups whose acidity is lower than that of the equatorial hydroxy group due to a very strong intramolecular hydrogen bond. Since the equatorial hydroxy group is more acidic, Sulfonylation takes place at this position in pyridine. Moreover, preferential ditosylation of the axial hydroxy group in presence of metal hydride is due to the stabilization from the facile chelate formation with the metal ion as shown in the structure F and G. The second functional group that I am going to talk today is about amines which are nucleophilic and easily oxidized. Primary and secondary amino groups are sufficiently acidic that they are deprotonated by many organometallic reagents. If these types of reactivity are problematic, the amino group must be protected. The most general way of masking nucleophilicity is by acylations, and carbamates are particularly useful. Treatment of primary and secondary amines with alkyl chloroformate in presence of a base furnishes the corresponding alkyl carbamates. They are stable to oxidizing agents and aqueous bases and may be react with reducing agents. Iodotrimethylsilane is often used for the removal of the protecting group. Another carbamate protecting group is the troc group that can be reductively cleaved by zinc. Under these conditions, the truck group can be cleaved in the presence of the BOC and the benzyl groups, about which I'm going to talk soon. Next is the CBZ group, which is one of the most important nitrogen protecting groups in organic synthesis, especially in the peptide synthesis. It is introduced by reacting the amine with benzyloxycarbonyl chloride in presence of a base. The protected amine is stable to both aqueous acid and bases and can be removed by hydrogenolysis. 
The Bok group is another widely used protecting group for primary and secondary amines. It is inert to hydrogenolysis and resistant to bases and nucleophilic reagents, but is more prone to cleavage by acids than the CBZ group. Deprotection of the Bok group is conveniently carried out with TFA. Another frequently used protecting group for amines is f carbamate, which can be introduced by reacting the amine with fluoronyl methyl oxycarbonyl chloride. Piperidine is usually preferred for f group removal as it forms a stable adduct with the dibenzofulvene byproduct, preventing it from reacting with the substrate. FMARC protection has found significant use in solid phase peptide synthesis. Simple amides are generally prepared from the acid chloride or the anhydride. Amides are exceptionally stable to acidic or basic hydrolysis and are classically hydrolyzed by heating in strongly acidic or basic solutions. Simple amides are satisfactory protecting groups only if the rest of the molecule can resist the vigorous acidic or alkaline hydrolysis necessary for its removal. Otherwise, thalamides could be used for breast protection of primary amines as it can be cleaved by treatment with hydrazine as in the Gabriel synthesis of amines. However, it does have some disadvantages, for example, it is quite sensitive to nucleophilic reagents, which in the case of mild aqueous base results in ring opening. The benzyl derivative is another popular amine protecting group formed by the reaction of amines with benzyl chloride in presence of a base. However, in some cases, dibenzylated product is obtained from the primary amines. The benzyl group is stable towards both acids and bases and can regenerate the amine by hydrogenolysis with palladium catalyst and hydrogen in presence of an acid. An allyl group attached directly to amine can be removed by isomerization and Wilkinson's catalyst have been found to be effective for the process. For the selective hydrogenolysis of benzyl amines in presence of benzyl ethers, the non-pyrophoric palladium hydroxide on carbon, also known as the Perlman's catalyst, could be used. During a synthetic sequence, a carbonyl group may have to be protected against attack by various reagents such as strong nucleophiles, including organometallic reagents, acidic and basic conditions or reductants and oxidants. Because of the order of reactivity of a carbonyl group as shown on the present slide, it is possible to protect a reactive carbonyl group selectively in presence of a less reactive one. The most useful protective groups are the acyclic and cyclic acetals or ketals and the thioacetals. Acetals are stable to aqueous and non-aqueous bases, to nucleophiles including organometallic reagents, and to hydride reduction, and also to most oxidants. On the other hand, a 1,3-dithiane or 1,3-dithiolene prepared to protect an aldehyde is converted to an anion when treated by a strong base such as butyl lithium. Also, the sulfur analogs can be cleaved by a wide range of reductants and oxidants. The oxygen analogs, unlike the sulfur analogs, are readily cleaved by acidic hydrolysis. The protective group is introduced by treating the carbonyl compound in the presence of an acid with alcohol, diol, orthoester, or dithiol. Another carbonyl protecting group is the 1,3-oxathiolene derivative which can be prepared by reaction with mercaptoethanol in presence of a Lewis acid. The 1,3-oxathiolanes are particularly useful when non-acidic conditions are required for deprotection. The 1,3-oxathiolane group can be removed by treatment with rainy nickel in alcohol or by treating with a mild halogenating agent such as NBS or chloramine T. The Wieland Mischer ketone is a common intermediate in the synthesis of both natural and synthetic steroids. Because of resonance stabilization, the carbonyl of the alpha beta unsaturated ketone is less electrophilic 
and therefore less reactive to nucleophiles compared to an isolated ketone. As a result, in order to reduce the less reactive alpha-beta unsaturated ketone, the more reactive ketone needs to be masked first that could be done by forming a ketone by reaction with a diol in presence of an acid. The last functional group I will talk about today is the carboxylic acids. Protecting groups for carboxylic acids are used to avoid reaction of acidic hydrogen with bases or to prevent nucleophilic addition at the carbonyl group. If only the OH as opposed to the carbonyl of a carboxyl group has to be masked, it can be readily accomplished by esterification. Some of the methods for ester formation includes reaction with alcohol in presence of an acid or even milder condition using DCC as the activating and dehydrating agent or from the Mitsunobu esterification with alcohols in presence of triphenylphosphine and TED that occur under neutral conditions. An operationally simple method for protecting the carbonyl group of COOH group against nucleophilic attack is its conversion to a silyl ester which are cleaved by treatment with an acid. A more difficult problem of protecting both the carbonyl and hydroxyl group of a carboxyl group can be accomplished by conversion to an oxazoline derivative which can be prepared from the acid by reaction with 2-amino-2-methylpropanol or with 2-2-dimethyl aziridine. Now, I would like to conclude this talk with an example where we can apply the knowledge we have gained today. The question is, how to convert A to E? So, we start with the protection of the indole with BOG group to get the product B. Now, we have to get rid of the TES and TMS protecting group to form unprotected diol which will further react to form the epoxide. Since the product E still has the TBDPS protecting group intact, we cannot use any fluoride source which is able to cleave the TBDPS group. Instead, treatment with an aqueous acidic acid gives the product C in which the acid labile groups that is TES, TMS and THP is cleaved whereas the Bok group, methyl ester and bulky TBTPS protecting groups survive the condition. At this stage, it becomes necessary to differentiate the three hydroxyl groups in product C. Upon treatment of the triol C with tosyl chloride and triethylamine in presence of dibutyl tin oxide, Tosylation occurred selectively at the primary alcohol of the 1,2-diol. This selectivity is achieved due to the chelation effect of diol with the tin species. After conversion of the resulting tosylate into epoxide by a nucleophilic substitution, we get the final desired product E. So at the end, we can all agree that the many mutually complementary protective groups provide a great degree of flexibility in the design of synthesis of complex molecules. And with that, I would like to wrap up. And I thank everyone for watching this episode on advanced organic chemistry. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Ria, for a great talk on protecting groups, which was very useful in helping us understand how to manage the reactivity of certain functional groups in the presence of others. Tune in next time as we continue our synthesis module and begin to discuss radicals. See you next time!